A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care is with his elect. Verbum Domini. One thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. 
but God proves his love for us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will he be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Verbum Domini. Dominos vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem. When Mary, the sister of Lazarus, came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would have not died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. It has now been, he has now been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. Verbum Domini.
the raising of, the La of Lazarus from the tomb, the calling forth by our Lord from the tomb is one of his greatest public miracles and a miracle that he wishes each one of us to participate in, that is being raised from the dead. It's very interesting in this gospel passage, we see Jesus wept. The shortest verse in all of the scriptures, the God-man, Jesus Christ, wept that he had friends that he cried over, that he lost. Jesus wept, and he weeps over our losses, over our pain. The entire month of November, the church remembers the souls of the faithful departed that are members of the church suffering, church in purgatory. Yesterday, we celebrate the solemnity of all saints, a day that we recognize all those who behold the face of God, all those who are in beatific vision that see God face to face, that see the face of our Redeemer, we call this the church triumphant. This includes all of the saints canonized and along with all of the souls that are just in heaven. And that there are many souls in heaven that are not canonized saints, but souls that are illumined by God's light, by God's face. The saints are pillars along our life's way, along our own journey. They illumine our journey. At the Easter Vigil in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, the biggest church in all of Christendom, when the lights are put down, and the paschal candle is processed in through the door to very dark church. And then one by one, these candles are lit from the one candle that is processed in, symbolizing Christ's victory over sin and death. And then a dark church becomes an illumined church illumined by the light that you hold, symbolizing the baptism that you've received. But what's interesting is be, the lights may be turned out in all of St. Peter's. It may be a dark church starting out, but all of the pillars of St. Peter's have saints in them. And I'm not talking about a three-foot statue of a saint. I'm talking about a 25-foot to 35-foot statue of a saint. And behind these pillars are lights. The saints are in glory, and the lights behind the saints are the only lights in St. Peter's that are not turned out. Every other light is turned out besides those lights illuminating the saints. Why? Because you can't snuff out the light of glory. The saints are in glory. The saints are the ones who, again, are the pillars and the ones leading us to our heavenly homeland. That is heaven. Heaven is our ultimate end. Heaven is our goal and our destination, the goal of our existence, the reason why we are created. If I were to ask you, 
why God made you. Some of you would know the answer that you learn from the Baltimore Catechism. God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in the next. The meaning of our existence, to be with God, to be in union with God. And we on earth are the church militant. That is, we are pilgrims on this earth who are awaiting our homeland, awaiting our destination. As St. Paul says, we are running this race, and we have not finished the race. We are running for that ultimate prize. The church suffering, those in purgatory, the catechism teaches in paragraph 1030, are all who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are in need of prayers. And indeed, they are assured of their, their eternal salvation, but after death, they undergo purification, as so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy and glory of heaven. Paragraph 1032 further states, the teaching is also based on the practice of prayer for the dead already mentioned in sacred scripture. Quote, therefore, Judas Maccabees made atonement for the dead so that they might be delivered from their sin. From the beginning, the church has honored the memory of the dead and offered prayers and suffrage for them, above all in the Eucharistic sacrifice, so that thus purified, they may attain the beatific vision of God. And the church also commends almsgiving indulgences and works of penance undertaken on behalf of the dead. And this is an important point. The sacrifice of the cross, which is represented on the altar in an unbloody manner at every Eucharistic offering, every Eucharistic sacrifice, reaches the souls in purgatory. Perhaps you have seen that image of a priest offering mass and the souls in purgatory that are underneath the altar that are reaching up at the glory. That is the sacrifice of Christ on the altar. You can see the flames of purgatory, the souls being purified, and the souls of those who are in purgatory reaching up and asking, begging for mercy, begging for prayer. The sacrifice of the Mass is precisely where the entire communion of the saints is gathered. The church triumphant, again, the church in glory, the church militant, that is us who are running this race, and also the church in purgatory, those who are being purified by God's light, by God's mercy. This is where we come together as a communion of the saints, this side of heaven, at the altar. The church in suffering and purgatory cannot merit for themselves. In the merciful plan of God, he allows us to merit and to pray for the souls going through purification. It's been a long-standing custom that the faithful can obtain a plenary indulgence by visiting a cemetery each day between November 1st and November 8th. And this has been extended throughout the entire month of November this year. The decree from the Vatican states from last week, the plenary indulgence for those who visit a cemetery and pray for the dead, even if only mentally, this is very important, for those who can't get 
to a cemetery. For those of you at home or are homebound, the church extends this to you. For those who can only get there at least mentally, that you want to get there. Normally established only for the individual days from the 1st to the 8th of November may be transferred to other days of the same month until its end. These days freely chosen by the individual faithful may also be separate from each other. In other words, you have the entire month to make this pilgrimage, albeit in person, to a cemetery, and also for those who can't mentally. You can do it, you can break it up throughout the month. And also, the plenary indulgence normally available on this particular day, November 2nd, may be transferred to any day of the month of November. These indulgences are applicable only to the souls in purgatory and not for us. We offer it for them, for our deceased. In visiting the church or an oratory in person, or as the decree states, at least mentally, it is required that one our father and the creed be cited the usual conditions for obtaining an indulgence are required. This is being in a state of grace, sacramental confession 20 days before or 20 days after, and the intention and the inner disposition of detachment from sin, and the reception of Holy Communion along with prayers for the intentions of the Pope the Creed, the Our Father, and the Hail Mary are suggested prayers. All of us have friends and family who have passed on to eternal life. All of us. Maybe even during the last two years. And we never presume that a soul has gone straight to heaven. That's God's work. That's God's priority. That's God's judgment. That is up to the mercy of God. Purgatory, in essence, is an act of God's mercy. It's an act of God's goodness. And we commend all the souls of the faithfully departed to the mercy of God. Perhaps there are members of your family Perhaps there are members of your friends in your circle that you were not able to reconcile with before they died. There are many people, perhaps, that your loved ones died, your friends died, co-workers died, and that because of human brokenness, because maybe of something in our own lives, maybe perhaps something that the deceased did to us, there was animosity. And that there was not a moment that we, we were able to reconcile with that person. And that's very painful for a lot of people. This might be a good year, this might be a good time for us during this entire month to pray for them, first of all, to pray for that person that inflicted injustice, pain, and also it's a moment for us to let go. It might be a good moment for us to forgive, because only God truly can give his forgiveness, impart his forgiveness. Forgive that person. That person is deceased. Might be a moment, a good moment for all of us as an entire church. And this is what builds up the church. This is what increases holiness in the church. When its members 
church militant, come before the Lord in repentance and forgive and give it over to our Lord. On behalf of your deceased loved ones, family and friends who have, and for those who you know and desire to pray for right now, I offer the prayer for their soul. This is a traditional prayer that the church prays. Lord, do not call your servant to account, for no one can stand guiltless in your presence unless you grant them forgiveness of all his sins. Therefore, we pray that in passing judgment, you will not let your sentence fall heavily on one who is commended to you by the sincere prayer of Christian faith. But with the help of your grace, may this servant, who during life was sealed with the sign of the Blessed Trinity, be found worthy of escaping the doom of your vengeance. We ask this of you, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and all the souls of the faithfully departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.